All right, here are the top updates in AI news, research, and science this week. This includes Google releasing their new AI video generator, Midjourney's update to version 6, Stability releasing their video generator, New York Times suing OpenAI, and a lot more. So let's jump right in. All right, so first, Midjourney. So earlier this week, Midjourney announced that they are now alpha testing their version 6 models. So you just need to add dash dash v6 after your prompt to use version 6 instead of version 5. They claim that image coherence and prompt understanding are greatly improved. So let's look at some of the results. So here are some generations from other users. So here's a bold dessert combination of chestnut and squash, varied textures including biscuit, creamy and frozen elements, simple yet elegant presentation, and honestly these images are not bad. They're very realistic, and it really does follow the prompt. So there's like biscuits in the plate, there's creamy elements, there's frozen elements. This is really good. Here's Chewbacca wearing a crown made of ivy and grapes. I don't know why you would do that, but here we go. Here is Chewbacca wearing a crown of ivy and grapes. So it follows the prompt very well. Here's another generation using V6. So here's a retro film feel. And you can see like Mid Journey and Stable Diffusion, they still suck at generating hands. You can see her hands are really weird. Uh, over here, her, her teeth are also a bit weird. Uh, you can see her thumb and the fingers here. I would even argue that Stable Diffusion handles hands a bit better than Mid Journey. But other than the fingers, I mean, everything else looks pretty decent. Here's woman in the sauna demonstrating massage techniques on each other. You can see fingers are still a bit off. Looks like she's missing her right arm here. These arms aren't really, I don't know where where that arm is from. And then I don't know where there's suddenly like a pink person here. The hands here are also really weird. And then there's suddenly a hand over here. And again, just the fingers are a bit off. And I, I wouldn't say they are exactly demonstrating massage techniques on each other. So yeah, here is a fortified defensive mansion designed for social collapse, whatever that means. So you can see it generates architecture pretty well. I don't see any major flaws with this necessarily. Uh, the, the tips here are kind of weird. Same with over here, but overall it looks pretty good and realistic. Here are some photos of an 80s New York inhabited by monsters. Uh, so I don't see any monsters here, but it does have like this 80s feel. Same with this one, no monsters. We got something here, but the, the body looks weird. Like the head is over here, but I don't know what this lump is. Scared beautiful woman in a prison surrounded by angry men. So she doesn't look scared necessarily. And the men are not angry. They don't look angry. They, they look more confused rather than angry. So yeah, handling emotions, it's still, it's not great. But yeah, those are some demo generations of Mid Journey V6. Overall, V6 is decent, but I wouldn't say it's like significantly better and more accurate. Okay, this article is super fascinating. So researchers have developed this AI, which they called life to vec which can be used to predict events in people's lives. An AI is basically, the backbone of it is a neural network, and a neural network can be used to approximate any function or to predict the probability of something. So if you train a neural network on large amounts of data about people's lives, in theory, that AI could be used to predict what will happen in that person's life given a series of events and even estimate the time of death. And that's exactly what these researchers did. So these researchers analyzed health data and attachment to the labor market for 6 million people. And they found that it was able to predict the outcomes such as personality and time of death with high accuracy. I think this can be a very powerful tool, especially for health diagnosis. If AI could very accurately tell you when you would die given you know, your current life events, then it could be a very strong warning to people to, you know, start to eat healthier or exercise more. I can also think of a use case of this for relationships. So for example, given a series of events, you are X percent likely to break up versus not break up. You are X percent likely to get married or like this partner is X percent your ideal life partner, something like that. This could also be used for like career advice or trajectories. So like given your life events so far, you are most likely to have a career in this or you are most likely to succeed in this. So I think this doesn't have to just apply to health diagnosis and predicting the time of death. There's a lot of other things you could predict if you feed it more data about your life. 
Now, there are, of course, some ethical issues with this. I mean, if you feed it all the data about your life, could this be a breach of privacy? And so they also warn of a negative side to this, where if you're giving this AI all your life data, it can be sold to like companies, which can then categorize us extremely accurately and then use these like user profiles to predict our behavior and influence us. So this life data could be exploited if given to the wrong hands. But I think this is a really interesting use case that should be developed further. I think there's a lot of cool things we can do with it. All right, next up, only a few days ago, New York Times decides to sue OpenAI and Microsoft for copyright, alleging that OpenAI used millions of articles for training without permission. And while other media companies such as Germany's Axel Springer or the Associated Press have reached some middle ground with OpenAI and have entered deals with them, the New York Times chose a more confrontational approach and decided to sue OpenAI. They allege that this copyright infringement could have cost billions of dollars. OpenAI obviously responded by saying they were surprised and disappointed, and they hope that they will find a mutually beneficial way to work together. The New York Times claims that this AI technology is not transformative. They claim that the content generated by ChatGPT and Copilot closely resembled the New York Times style. And actually, I dug a bit deeper, and this tweet by Jason Kint is quite interesting. So it shows you the full New York Times filing, and there are a few sections where they showed the output from GPT-4 and the actual text from New York Times, and you can see the text in red is exactly the same, which is evidence that GPT-4 is copying from the New York Times somehow. Here's another example where the red text is almost the same as the actual text from the New York Times. And here are some more screenshots. This whole section of text is exactly the same. They don't even try to paraphrase it or anything. So yeah, it's really hard to guess how this would end. It's a really interesting case. And actually, this is not the first time that these AI giants have been sued by other companies for copyright. So last year, the Game of Thrones author also sued OpenAI, accusing them of copyright. Universal and other music publishers have also sued Anthropic for copyright. And then Getty Images has accused Stability of using Getty Pictures without their permission. So it's quite interesting how this would play out. I think both sides have valid arguments. If these media companies do win, then it could impede the training of these large language models. All right, next up, this article talks about a really exciting announcement from Apple. So wouldn't it be cool if you could have an AI on your phone, like a full language model like ChatGPT? Well, that's currently not possible. And the biggest issue here is memory. So ChatGPT and other large language models, they have like billions to over a trillion parameters and they're like hundreds of gigabytes in size. However, most smartphones, they only have like a few gigabytes of memory. In this recent paper that they published, they found a way to work with these large language models with limited memory. So they basically developed a method that can transfer data between flash memory and the DRAM, which would solve this memory problem. This can speed up CPU operations by up to 500% and GPU processes by up to 25 times. So without getting into too much of the details, they basically discovered two techniques. One is called windowing, which reduces the amount of data that needs to be exchanged. And then the second one is called row column bundling, which basically processes larger chunks of data and makes it more efficient. If you want to read more about this, I will link to this paper in the description below. All right, earlier this week, Google announced their new video generator platform called Video Poet. Now they have a variety of functions from text to video to image to video, but there's also like audio options as well, which I'll show you in a second. But here are just some examples of their text to video function. So here's a dog listening to music with headphones, highly detailed, and this is actually really good. So some of the other video generators, it's really hard to produce such sharp details of a dog's fur in the video, but it seems like Google's algorithm is doing a very good job. And then here's here's another one, a large blob of exploding, splashing rainbow paint with an apple emerging. Uh, you can see that there is indeed an apple emerging, so it follows the prompt quite well. This is really good. Here's a robot cat eating spaghetti, digital art. Again, it, it follows the prompt really well. Pumpkin exploding, slow motion. This is really good. So I'll link to this page in the description below where you can check out all of these examples. You can see some of these prompts are really challenging. So a T-Rex jumping over a cactus with water gushing after the T-Rex falls. And this video follows exactly what the prompt says. So it's really high fidelity. Now there's also video to audio where you input a video and then it would create the audio for you, which is really interesting. So here's a dog eating popcorn at the cinema. (laughs) 
<laughs> this is really good. You can clearly hear that there are some dog sounds, but it's also like a popcorn eating sound. Here's a teddy bear playing drums. And you can hear that the audio is really synced with when the bear hits the drums. Here's a cat playing a piano. Same with here, you can see it, it only plays the piano when the cat hits a key. So it's in sync with the video. Very impressive. And then here are some image to video examples where you input a still image and then you add a prompt to it and then it would spit out a video. Unfortunately, this isn't out for us to use yet, but I will definitely keep you updated once they do release it. All right, in other news, Stability also launched their stable video diffusion to their API. So the model can generate two seconds of video at, I'm guessing this is like frames per second, so 25 and 24, and developers can use it through the API. So here's their trailer video, and you can see also very impressive. So there's a lot more competitors now for AI video generation. Like earlier in the year, it was just Runway, but, and then we had Pika, and then there's like Moon Valley, and now more and more of these video generators are now popping up. So it's a really exciting time. And I think like in only a few months, video generation is going to be significantly better. All right, next article. This is really fascinating. So some researchers at Nanyang Tech University have used AI chatbots against themselves to hack each other, which is really fascinating. So they managed to compromise multiple chatbots, including ChatGPT, Google Bard, and Bing Chat, and got these chatbots to produce content that breaches their guidelines. So for example, probably like teaching you how to hack something or just outputting some illegal stuff. So they trained a large language model on a database of prompts that had already been shown to hack these chatbots. And once you train that model, it can then generate further prompts to jailbreak these other chatbots. This is yet another of many handful examples which shows that these AI chatbots can definitely be outwitted and could be manipulated to produce illegal content. So getting more into the details, they called their method master key, and how this works is they first reverse engineered how these chatbots detect and defend themselves from malicious queries. And then they basically trained a model to learn and produce prompts that bypass these defenses. This training and learning can be automated so that they can create a model that can adapt to new prompts. And this part is really interesting. So. It doesn't even matter if like ChatGPT, for example, finds out about this hack and decides to like fix this vulnerability. This AI can then adapt and create new prompts and constantly find new vulnerabilities. So it's kind of like an arms race or a cat and mouse chase where either you're faster than the hacker or the hacker is faster than you. It, it really depends on who is one step ahead. All right, for artists who are worried about AI copywriting your content, this article is super important. So there's actually a variety of weapons that you can use against AI to kind of stop it from copying your work. One of them is this free software called Glaze, which is created by researchers at the University of Chicago. So basically how Glaze works is it tweaks the pixels of your image in ways that humans won't notice it, but when the AI copies it and renders an image of it, it basically messes it up. They've also added a new enhancement called Nightshade, which confuses AI algorithms even further by getting it to interpret a dog as a cat. And they call this term poisoning their images. So basically you alter the pixels of your images. And then when an AI is used to train on your images, it basically acts like poison and it messes them up. Another startup called Spawning has launched HaveIBeenTrained.com, which is a tool where you can enter your image and see if it has been ever fed into an AI model for training. It also allows you to opt out of such use in the future. And similar to how Glaze is altering an image's pixels to poison the image, a similar technology exists for audio samples. So this was developed by researchers at Washington University in Missouri, and they called this the anti-fake software, which is used to thwart AI copying voices. So it slightly alters your voice samples or your voice recordings so that normal humans can't really hear the difference. But once it's fed into an AI for training, it messes them up. So it basically it prevents the AI in training and copying that voice. All right, finally, I found this really nice use case for AI chatbots. So it's used to help seniors fight loneliness. So this company called Intuition Robotics have developed this robot called LEQ, which basically looks like this. And it's basically designed to talk to seniors and help alleviate loneliness and isolation. So it remembers your interests and your conversations. It can tell jokes, play music, 
provide inspirational quotes, etc. It can lead exercises, ask about your health, give reminders to take medication, and a lot of other functions. So a few seniors have received this LEQ robot to test out, and they found that 90% of these seniors reported lower levels of loneliness. And then this woman who is aged 83, this is what she said, it was so what I needed. I can say things to Ellie that I can't say to my grandchildren. I can just open the floodgates. So yeah, I just found this to be a really cool and beneficial use case. And I think more of these chatbots could be developed in the future to help seniors out or even other people with psychological issues, with depression. I think there's a lot of really nice use cases for AI chatbots. So again, I will link all of these articles in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, remember to like, share, subscribe, and stay tuned for more content.